Oh, I've had enough. <laughs> so as you may or may not know, I've been, you know, a bit frustrated with a lot of the bourbon releases lately. So many releases, press releases and fanfare that are eventually end up kind of disappointing. Not that they're bad, but it just kind of left me wondering about bourbons that I've been sipping personally, aside from my own barrel picks and aside from special releases that folks don't really talk about too much or overlook or forget about. Bourbons, mind you, that I think are better than a lot of these special releases that have been dropping endlessly. So today, I have five of these bottles that you can pretty much buy today with no inflated prices, no press releases, just damn good bourbons to enjoy. It's the Mash and Drum. Welcome back to the Mash and Drum. I am Jason C. And if it's your first time here, subscribe to the channel and like the video while you're here. Okay, five bourbons I am sipping right now that I love, that are available, that are affordable, and bring that punch of flavor that I want in a bourbon that seems to be lacking lately in a lot of special releases. Bottles that I see a lot of folks just walk right by. I mean, are they not limited enough for you? Are they, um, maybe because it doesn't say Buffalo Trace on the bottle? I'm sure there are a, a number of reasons why people may overlook these bottles. I, it, it's kind of like, does it fall into a thing where if it's not allocated, that means it's not special? And let me say this first, because you guys who may or may not know my love of wild turkey, I've talked about Rare Breed, I've talked about Russell Reserve, and I've talked about Wild Turkey 101 at length, almost at nauseum, for a long time. So I'm gonna say it now, none of these bottles are from Wild Turkey. If you guys know my love for Wild Turkey, I've talked about them for years now. So none of these five selections are wild turkey bottles. I know, so as you pick up the pieces from your head exploding and you get ready, let's start with one of my five choices. First bottle, Four Roses Small Batch Select. Now I know that the Four Roses profile may not be for everyone, but hear me out on this one. This bourbon came to the fold in 2019, I think. Uh, six of the 10 Four Roses recipes are blended to make Small Batch Select, OBSV, OBSK, OBSF, OESV, OESK, and OESF. 104 proof, non-chill filtered. It's a non-H stated bourbon, but said to be about seven years old and only about 60 bucks. It's classic Four Roses that brings the sweet and the spice flavors. Um, maybe a little bit off profile. There's some fruit, there's some baking spices that give this a very premium bourbon flavor profile feel to it. I think bourbon and whiskey geeks definitely like to chase down the single barrels and obviously they deliver some amazing flavors as well. However, the small batch select for me consistently delivers unique flavors with a great silky mouthfeel every single time. It's readily available. It sits on the shelf and as far as I'm concerned, it will probably stay that way. But for those of you looking for something available and delicious, add this to your list next. Second bottle, Baker's Bourbon from Jim Beam. It was the redheaded stepchild when it was a small batch. Now that it's a single barrel, I still think it kinda is. Now there are store picks available that pop up of this for age statements I think 11, 12, 13 years old that people go nuts for. But even though there's a seven on this label, these normally fall into a eight or nine year category as stated on the neck label. It gives you all the information you need. 107 proof, also 60 bucks for this one. Now you can argue that Knob Creek nine year single barrel at 120 proof is a better value. I like the proof and profile of Baker's I think a little bit more. I think because of Knob Creek, Baker's tends to get overlooked. Uh, it delivers with all the classic bean notes, heavy vanilla, caramel, nuttiness with some dark fruit mixed in. Plus being a single barrel, you know, each bottle can be a little bit different. I love this bottle. Um, I did really enjoy the redesign of this bottle as well. I definitely still think it gets overlooked. People don't realize that it's a eight to nine year old product that's in this bottle. Why are you walking by this? I have my last choice in this glass and damn it's good. All right, number three is actually a Burai, a bourbon and a rye blend. It's the Redwood Empire Lost Monarch. Named after the world's largest coastal redwood tree, Lost Monarch is a bourbon and a rye blend. So the blend is 60% of a 95 five rye and 40% of a bourbon that's 75 corn, 21 rye, and 4% malted barley. Ages in the blend are four to 12 year old for the bourbon and three to five year old for the rye. 
This is 40 bucks where I am here in Ohio. It's a hell of a value. It's complex for a 90 proof whiskey, clove, cinnamon, vanilla, lots of citrus and butterscotch. Again, it brings the sweet and spice, uh, gives you a great palate, good mouthfeel. I mentioned 40 bucks here where I am, but it's actually 35 bucks in a lot of other areas. It's a hell of a value in another whiskey I think folks don't pay enough attention to because I just don't think people know the brand. I think the label's really cool, but this Lost Monarch, if you're into like a bourbon rye blend, it's just, it's, it's such a great bottle. Number two is Penelope Barrel Strength. Uh, Penelope Barrel Strength Bourbon. Now, I think the secret's out on this. I think people do enjoy this, uh, this bourbon. I added this to my list because I think it's a great representation of what younger whiskeys blended together can be. I've said it before, age isn't everything. And what Penelope does with their barrel strength offering is blend three bourbon mash bills aged three to four years in new American oak barrels, and they bottle it completely uncut and non-chill filtered. So the mash bill actually works out to be 76 corn, 15% wheat, 6% rye, and 3% malted barley. So it's a four grain mash bill that brings brown sugar, vanilla, toffee, rye spice, little punch of proof and some flavor. Each batch release can be a little bit different, which makes it fun to taste these. But for a barrel strength offering, it's super approachable. And I think there's a good job of hiding the youth of bourbons in the mix. This happens to be batch number eight, 115.8 proof. Good proof point. I said it's approachable. If you're looking to get into barrel strength bourbons, this might be a great place to start. Um, it's light, it's fruity, but it's bold and spicy at the same time. And lastly, my number one, another bean product, Knob Creek 12 year. Originally, this was released as a limited edition bourbon in late 2019, but now Knob Creek 12 is a standard part of the Knob Creek small batch lineup. 100 proof, this is also 60 bucks and easily attainable. Stores tend to sell out of this fast, but you could find them online at retail pretty often. I just looked it up like before I shot this video, there's at least eight or nine websites that just had this for 60 bucks, plenty of it. This is what's in my glass right now. This brings a, a very potent flavor profile. Oak, leather, kind of touches of vanilla, toffee, a little bit of that beam nuttiness. I'll say this, I, and I'll put Wild Turkey Rare Breed in the same camp. This is a perfect example of a great available bourbon that's non-limited edition, aged over 10 years, that can give you a limited edition experience without breaking the bank. At 60 bucks, it's a bargain and a bottle that should be celebrated more in the time of bourbon that we are in. I think it's just, it's just fantastic. You know, I'll say Beam, honestly, has probably been one of those distilleries that have been disappointing me a little bit more often than not lately. But they have so many good bourbons that are available. And I think that's the issue. Sometimes, you know, you're a victim of your own like success. You, they have so many great bourbons that are actually available that you can buy that actually outshine their, their own limited releases. But I think Knob Creek 12 year stands above all that. And there's even a cast strength version of this that might be even better, although it's harder to find. But Knob Creek 12 year, just another example of just a great attainable bourbon that you don't have to wait in line for. It's a non-limited release, but can give you kind of a limited release experience. All right, guys, well, here's my uh, five bourbons. Well, four bourbons and one burai <laughs> that are attainable, affordable, and just great representations of, of bourbons that people just tend to walk by. They don't pay too much attention to. Again, I just think because they're not allocated, they're easy to find. And uh, maybe for folks that don't know the brands too well, um, these are absolutely delicious bourbons that anyone can enjoy. And again, you don't have to break the bank for them. But let me know down in the comments if you could pick five unallocated available bourbons that you sip on each and every week. Throw them down in the comments. Let's, let's get a big collective list and let's see what, what happens. Let's see how many of these bourbons that are available, which ones are they that everyone is enjoying uh, week to week without having to chase a lot of these limited editions. So with that, if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button below, please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, and thanks for watching The Mash and Drum. Till next time, take care everybody.